Astral microtubules emanate from mitotic spindle poles toward the cell cortex, and although their precise function is controversial, they help position the cytokinetic furrow at the end of mitosis by confining actomyosin contraction to the cell equator. When microtubules are shortened with depolymerizing drugs, contraction occurs all around the cell cortex. Kathleen Rankin and Linda Waterman from the University of Washington in Seattle decided to take the opposite approach to studying astral microtubules, setting out to lengthen them instead. One way that we knew that we could lengthen astral microtubules is to deplete the levels of a microtubule depolymerizing motor that we work on extensively in the lab called mitotic centromere associated kinesin, which is a kinesin that tracks on the tips of microtubules and it disassembles them and kind of sets the length of the astral microtubules. So when you deplete this protein, astral microtubules get longer. That's been described by a number of labs, including my own. When we lengthened those microtubules, they segregated their chromosomes pretty well. And then just as the cells enter cytokinesis, just as they begin contracting their cleavage furrow, there's a horrible slip up. The spindle suddenly jumps to one side. It's as if the entire cell squeezed the spindle and shot it over to one side of the cell. The spindle, chromosomes and all, is then shot back to the other side and ends up rocking back and forth until the cleavage furrow eventually closes occasionally trapping both sets of chromosomes in the same daughter cell. So the first thing we wanted to know was what was the force behind this radical movement of the spindle. And it appeared when we looked at the contractile myosin in the cell cortex that that was the culprit. Indeed, myosin oscillated between each cell pole, pushing the spindle to and fro. So somehow these extra long microtubules were causing the contractile myosin to squeeze the spindle right out of the furrow. And sure enough, if we inhibit the contractile myosin, we don't get any of these oscillations. Rankin and Waterman saw a similar effect when they lengthened astral microtubules using the stabilizing drug Taxol. Myosin oscillations again rocked the spindle from side to side. So what is it about the extra long microtubules that stimulates this contractile activity in the polar cortex? The cytokinetic furrow is clamping down at this point and all the contractile uh, activity should be localized to the furrow. So we looked very closely at the cortex in these cells and we saw that they exhibited a large number of blebs. Cells will normally bleb in the polar cortex during cell division, and this may very well have to do with the fact that much of the actin and myosin is being recruited to the cytokinetic furrow at this time, and it leaves the polar actin cortex relatively weakened. These membrane blebs aren't much of a problem to wild-type cells, but Waterman thinks that in the absence of MCAC, the cell's extended astral microtubules widen the blebs to a size large enough to initiate spindle oscillations you'll get a hydrostatic cytoplasmic flow right into that bleb. And if the bleb is large enough and the flow is strong enough, the entire spindle can be displaced from the cytokinetic furrow. But the actin cortex will reform, the contractile myosin will then resolve the bleb, and that'll shoot the spindle back in the opposite direction. That will trigger a massive bleb on the other side of the cell. And then the cell frantically must resolve that bleb and shoot the spindle back in the opposite direction. So it's the resolution of these very large blebs that cause the spindle to shoot back and forth across the cleavage furrow. The blebs also become dangerous if cytokinesis is delayed. It's previously been observed that depleting the cleavage furrow protein anilin induces a very similar spindle rocking phenotype, although no one had managed to explain this phenomenon. In the case of anilin, the cytokinetic furrow itself is damaged and it stops. And so now you have a situation where a cell is stranded in this very dangerous stage of cytokinesis where there's a tendency for blebs to form in the polar cortex and also microtubules at this time are getting naturally longer because the cell is progressing from mitosis into interphase. So eventually what we've seen in the anilin cells is that a bleb will form and then the spindle will be off to the races. So as far as we can tell, the characteristics of the oscillations are the same, and what sets them off is fairly identical. So what has Rankin and Waterman's study taught them about the function of astral microtubules in cytokinesis? It's taught us a little bit more about how important it is to control 
the length of the astral microtubules during this time. In other words, if they're too short, we know from many studies that you get a lot of contractile activity in the cortex, and although the cleavage furrow may still operate normally, its position is, is not quite as well refined. Now we know if astral microtubules are too long, then you risk setting off this process of blebbing and spindle oscillation. So you want to keep the astral microtubules short so that they don't disturb the actin cortex when it's in its most vulnerable state during cell division. The study also highlights the growing importance of membrane blebs to a number of different cellular processes. They're an extremely interesting phenomenon that's going to get more interesting in the next coming years because they're one of those cellular phenomena that have been routinely ignored by many cell biologists. And I admit that I ignored blebbing for many years myself when I watched cells divide. But in fact, there are a few individuals, uh, not the least of which is Guillaume Charas at the London Center for Nanotechnology, who have studied blebs quite closely and are beginning to realize that blebs occur during a lot of different processes, including cell migration and metastasis. Some of these cells use a bleb-based motility where a bleb will form and then you'll get hydrostatic flow into the bleb. So I think it's a relatively unstudied phenomenon that we need to learn more about. You can read more about the spindle rocking induced by long astral microtubules and membrane blebs in the paper by Rankin and Wardman, published in the July 12th issue of the Journal of Cell Biology.